You're watching Women of Strength TV with a purpose-driven woman who has a yearning deep in her soul to serve the world. Presented to you by Ange Wilcock, creator of Evolutionary Model of Well-Being, Mindfulness-Based Storytelling, and The Raw Woman Project, a businesswoman on a mission for every human on the earth to feel enough. Welcome to another episode of Women of Strength. And as I always say when I interview these amazing women, I have yet another amazing woman here um, with me today. And I'd like to welcome Sigrun. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. Oh, thank you so, so much. And off air, Sigrun was just telling me I don't have to say her surname and don't have to pronounce it because what I was telling her was that in nearly every episode, I've got someone's name wrong or pronounced it wrong. But Woman of Strength is all about just being ourselves, just showing up with who we are. Um, we don't have to be polished or anything like that. We just have to be us. So I just want to tell you a little bit about Sigrun. Um, she's amazing. And so she's a lifestyle entrepreneur and business mentor for online entrepreneurs. She has, a com uh, she has combined her unique background in business, information technology, architecture, and personal development to help women go from zero to multiple six figures in their online businesses. Wow. Prior to starting her own business, she was a CEO for over a decade of numerous businesses in Iceland and Switzerland. And during that time, she also consulted various startups in Europe and USA and worked with Dale Carnegie, trainer. In the last two years, Sigrun has trained thousands of entrepreneurs with her live online trainings and mentored hundreds of passionate entrepreneurs to take their business to the next level. She also holds four master's degrees. Wow, but I'm sure she's going to tell us about that. Um, and she's an Icelandic by origin, but a global citizen by heart. So welcome, welcome. It's, I'm Thank so, you. so excited to, to be able to interview you um, because Sigrun's got this wonderful TED Talk and I would encourage, I'm sure she'll tell us a little bit about that because I'm sure that's part of a journey, but I would encourage any woman listening to this um, to go and listen to her TED Talk. So the question I have for you, Signal, is tell us about your journey. When did it start about moving into that place of woman of strength? Well, I guess I was always a bit... Um the one who wanted to, you know, I'm Irish, you know, what do you call it in the horoscope? You know, I'm the one that wants to lead. Right. And already as a six-year-old, I remember I would pull a boy to the fence and tell my mother this was the guy I was going to marry. <laughs> <laughs> and I did marry that guy. And, uh, but it was, you know, the school system then pushes you a little bit down you know, when we have some uh, strengths, I would say. Yeah. So you kind of have to find them again later in life. And this is exactly my experience. I, I kind of probably had some born strengths, let's say. We're all born with some uh, strengths. And then the school system, you know, doesn't necessarily foster entrepreneurship yeah. or artistic strengths. It more focuses on maths and, and languages. And I had to rediscover myself in my 20s and realize what I really wanted in life. I studied architecture originally and was very determined to do that. I had to go abroad to do that from Iceland. So I moved to Germany, 20 years old, with one suitcase. And, uh, but then I realized two years before graduation, this wasn't it. And... I don't know where I got that strength, but my mother was very disappointed that I didn't become an architect. But there was this inner voice that was stronger mm. than anything else that told me this is not it. Uh, you got to be doing something else. And at the same time, the internet came. So I found my passion in virtual reality, uh, which is finally coming to fruit today. Yeah. 
but back then it was just experiments and I experimented. I was able to be at two wonderful universities and experiment with virtual reality. And then I decided, well, I'm not cut out to wait for technology. <laughs> I would have had to wait 20 years or whatever. And I, I moved just into the regular software development. And I was always looking for something else. Uh, and then I was in a company that was doing various new things, but then it, the crash came of the internet bubble. And I, like many other people, lost my job. And I decided then to learn about entrepreneurship. So I found a course for women. It was an evening course where twice, twice a week went to that course and learn to write a business plan. I knew nothing about running a business. I knew nothing about running a business plan. And I wrote my first business plan. And then I tried to get a job with a business plan because I wasn't ready to start a business. It was too far away from me. It was like, no, I'm not ready yet. So I was able to get a job by having the business plan. And a year later, suddenly the company was sold. And I got this crazy idea that I could be the CEO. And it's probably one of those craziest ideas I've gotten in my life, but also one of the best. And I have found when you get crazy ideas and you act on them quite fast, you don't overthink it too much. Yeah. That's when you find this strength, you know, and I think this is particularly, I want to give this message to women that we, 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 we can call something out, you know, it's there. And in a moment of truth or when the time is right, we can call on it and, and have that strength to do something. So I would ask my mother and my father and some people, what do you think? Can I apply for the job of a CEO? And my mother said, I don't know. And my dad said, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> yes. And I did. And I got the job without business education and business background. And that experience even though it came a bit later in life, I was already 34 years old. After that, I always can go back and say, hey, you had once this crazy idea yeah. of something that was totally out of reach for most people to just even think about, and I got the job. So everything else seems like, I, I, I test this, you know, I, I just want to get out of my comfort zone or, or giving a TEDx talk, or now I want to start my own podcast. And, and Everything is kind of like, it's scary when you think yeah. about it, but yeah. I've done, yeah, I did the other thing. So it, it's easier. Yeah. And I, I totally agree. Um, when we're really passionate about something and we're, it's that passion that drives us, we're not as scared and we don't stop and think about it very much like woman of strength podcast and TV. It was as a result of, um, the article that I wrote for Elephant Journal and I just put it out there and said because so many women connected to it and it was like okay I need this message to get out there on a bigger platform how can I do that because it was that was what was driving me you know and like you it's about we're very purpose driven and when we connect to that purpose it's like nothing can get in our way and every obstacle yeah. that comes along it's like this learning point isn't it so yeah and it's uh I did realize early in life that I wanted to give a message out to other women. I wasn't sure just how. Yeah. And I, I, I was very, have very, been very passionate about gender equality since I was a child uh, and probably since age of 15, 14. Um, there was a Red Sox movement in Iceland. We had a female political party mm -hmm. uh, in Iceland for 10, 15 years to push the other parties to have enough women on board. And I was very passionate about all that. And, but I also decided I, I don't want to go step into politics or I, I don't want to ne necessarily do it from the charity side. I want to rather uh, forge my own way and be a role model. Yeah. So, and I think we, we have a lack of role models generally. So if we can just add one person to it, uh, at least I hope that I inspire a few others to do yeah. the same. Yeah, and I'm sure you do. I felt inspired um, just by listening to your, you know, your TED talk. It's And when we're, 
you know, when we're passionate about something and we connect with other passionate women, whether that's through watching TED Talks, signing up to online programs or that, I think it really pushes women forward. It, it gives us the courage to actually understand, I can do this because, you know, you and I, you know, no disrespect to you, but we're just ordinary women um, who are passionate about something, who want to make a difference in the world. And, you know, and we're doing it. That's, that's what we're doing. So in terms of your journey into that, you know, being that woman of strength, and it sounds like it was, you know, from a very young age, a little bit like myself, who walked along that path with you? Was there anyone in particular or was there someone that you admired that you, you know, aspired to want to be like? Or Oh, yeah, that's, that's a great question. I uh, was very inspired uh, nine years old by the first female, democratically elected female president in the world to happen, to happen in Iceland. So we had a female president, it was 1981. Well, I guess I was then 10, yeah, 80, 80, yeah. I was nine years old. And my mother took me to her house in the morning after she got elected and we were women outside cheering and I was only nine years old, but I remember that moment like it was yesterday. And she was not a very, let's say, disruptive leader you know she was more like we uh, presidents in iceland are not like they don't have a lot of power it's more of a you know a figurehead and but still her impact is still she's still alive today i have met her in person uh, and uh, i got a selfie with her <laughs> and uh, it, it, she did inspire me in a way that well a woman can be a president you know there is no limit to what a woman can do uh, and then later in life, what was also the an Icelandic woman, Björk, the singer. Yes. Uh, she is world famous. Yeah. Uh, she lives, uh, my light is going off here. Uh, she lives in New York, actually. Uh, so I'm right in her city right now. And uh, I, ha I, I, I like that she has always gone paths that weren't there before she has forged her own path and she has come out in the last years finally talking about also being a role model for other women in terms of gender equality and the music industry every time she does a project if there is a famous guy that is a producer people automatically give credit to him yeah versus to her and she never talked about it, but she's come out in the recent years. And I think this has even made me like her more that uh, she's giving out this message. Hey, this is not right. This is just not right. It's, you know, women are doing all these great things, but we tend to not take notice of them, even other women. Yeah. And we have this unconscious bias that we need to get rid of. Cheryl Sandberg also mentioned that in her book, Lean In. Uh, this unconscious bias is something that I am um, truly passionate of how we can eliminate that or at least become more aware of it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I find that fr yeah, it's frustrating. Too, isn't it? It's so, it's so frustrating because actually women are the ones that are going to be leading and changing the world in the future. And yet if we connect to that as women and, and understand how powerful we are, it, we're going to make such a difference. So yeah, yeah, I love that. So did you get support? So you, you know, these are the, the women that you admire and, and um, you aspire to be like, you know, to be another leader in your field. What support did you have along the way, um, you know, from family or friends? Because we know as women that we try to be everything to everyone. And the last thing we do is look after ourselves. So who was that person who supported or guided you? Well, I would say I, I was brought up in the, you know, and, and the belief that I could do anything I wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, my parents were very supportive. But I did also see, even though my parents had their own business, that uh, maybe my mother wasn't following her passion. Maybe she was also spending a lot of time taking care of us. 
So even though she was not necessarily a role model for me, how to do it, she was actually doing the opposite. She was yeah. doing the things where I realized I don't want to do it. Yeah. So she gave me a, a positive influence. I was like, okay, I will choose to do it differently based on what I saw yeah. of someone not following their passion. She's an artist actually. And she oh. never, you know, she, she can do it. And she's doing it now at the age of 72. She's kind of doing her paintings and, and everything. But she could have probably been a famous artist if she yeah. really followed her passion. So she, I think just seeing that, sometimes we need to see the opposite to be truly inspired to go our own way. And uh, so, yeah, I've been also very supported by my parents. And I think also the the system I would say in Iceland where everyone can study it doesn't cost anything to study uh -huh. uh, everybody gets a student loan it doesn't matter what your parents earn or what you earn there is no bank guarantee needed nothing you, everybody gets a student loan there is low interest on them uh, so just that system of where it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor you you're uh, you can do whatever you want and that's maybe one of the reasons why I have so many degrees it has yeah <laughs> It, you know, it hasn't, the only one that actually kind of cost me money was my MBA at London Business School. Uh, yeah. But I got my employer at that time to pay for it. So I have <laughs> a, a pretty, I still have some student loans to pay back, but uh, <laughs> it's, I've, I've, there's nothing been stopping me when I've got an idea. It's either yeah. been a system or supportive parents. And currently it's a supportive husband who actually works in my business right now. Uh, so is it luck or is it choosing mm. to uh, not be stopped yeah. uh, by circumstances? Yeah, I, I believe in choice. I don't believe in yeah. luck. I don't, you know, people no. go, aren't you lucky? And it's like, actually, no. no. I made some choices in life and some of them were tough choices. You know, some of them yeah. meant that I, I lost people um, that were really dear to me or, or I lost their respect because, you know, we push through when we're passionate. And it's interesting what you say about your mum, because my mum was very similar in the fact that I saw her and, and she didn't live the life, or she still isn't living the life that she truly wanted to live. Um, but I was living that life. And that, that caused a lot of rift in our relationship, because again, she's very talented, you know, she's very creative and she uses her talents in many ways. And I'm sure that she could have been, you know, incredibly famous too, if she'd only pursued her passion. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it's got nothing to do with luck. It is yeah. about choice. We make choices. And, and I, exactly. you know, I appreciate you saying that because I think sometimes women aren't honest you know we get we look at our lives and go oh gosh aren't we so lucky but actually when we look back at our life and say actually I made some tough choices and I had to leave some things behind or I lost some people that I loved or you know I had to sever some friendships to get to where I am today um, so I think that is very very true it is definitely choice so yeah. if you were talking to um, some women today who are listening to this and say, what are, you know, two choices that you would advise them to take to move into that place of passion and purpose in their life? I think women have to be a little bit more selfish. Yeah. Be more egoistic. Selfless. Yeah. 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 Uh, put themselves, you know, we, we spend a lot of time and, and maybe uh, because I've seen it go different ways, I've, I've actually been a bit selfish in my own way because yeah. I've seen what happens when you do the opposite. And a lot of my clients come to me when they're finally ready, I feel, and it can have impact, like you said. Suddenly people around you are not so happy. Yeah. Um, whether it's your spouse or, or, or children or, or any other friends that are not happy about you putting yourself finally first. But I do think women have to do that. Yeah. Uh, we cannot just live for everybody else. I remember an incident at Tony Robbins seminar where a woman stood up, don't remember what the question originally was, but she started to kind of say, hey, she had spent her whole life, you know, at home for her husband, for her children. And it went on and on how much she had done for everybody else. And 
Tony Robbins. <laughs> Oh my God, he got mad at her and saying, yeah, 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 you're just feeling sorry for yourself. It, it's your own choice, basically. And um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't care for others. It's not about that. But there, we should not put ourselves last, yeah. which a lot of women do. So putting ourselves first and maybe making, you know, compromises in a way that it's not always about someone else and uh we all have some kind of a purpose in life mm -hmm. and it's never too late uh yeah. i see wonderful examples of women in their 60s finding their passion and finally making it happen finally putting themselves first and the joy that you see in their eyes and 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 it doesn't matter. It, it, it's really, it's never too late and we have to take care of ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. And I, and I think that um, even though it feels selfish to put ourselves first, I believe it's selfless because when we do put ourselves first and we step into that purpose, we feel so joyful and happy that we have so much more to give and that has that ripple effect, doesn't it? Everyone else in yeah. our life feels happy and, and content. And we can support them far more than if we're someone who's, you know, just not doing what we want to do, but doing what other people want us to do. Because then resentment comes in and, and boredom and we become demotivated and life becomes hard. And then if life's hard for the woman in the family, life tends to come, become hard for everyone else in that family too. So um, yeah. great, great advice. Now, how can our amazing women who are watching and listening to this today, how can they get in touch with you? How can they find you? Uh, my website is sigrun.com, S-I-G-R-U-N.com. Yeah. I was lucky enough to grab that domain in 99, <laughs> long <laughs> before I knew that would be my business. And I also have a free group, uh, but everything can be found on my website. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Thank you so, so much for um, this beautiful conversation today and just sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Remain real, authentic and whole. Be yourself and continue to follow your dreams. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time on Woman of Strength TV.